One thing I took away from our conversation is that uh, the amount, like the number of CFU, colony forming units, doesn't matter. Like there can be 30, there can be 50 billion, that doesn't matter. I think yours only has like six. Yeah. So, yeah. What, so clinical outcomes is um, what you want to look at. So whatever the, the CFUs and the strains they use in the clinical study, that is the result of, you know, what you're looking for. Um, so, yeah, the, the 30 billion, 50 billion, 70 billion is just is marketing. <laughs> you know, it's just like a diamond ring when you go to buy a diamond ring. You know, it's like it's about three months salary, you know, to buy a diamond ring. Well, that's just marketing. It's just made up. It was one month. And again, and then the marketing department at the diamonds, like, no, nah, it's two months. Oh, yeah, now it's three months. So it's kind of the same thing where it's just like 20 billion is better, 30 billion, 50 billion, 70 billion, you know, whatever it is. You know, there are some good probiotics out there that have a lot, you know, billions and billions. Um, VSL number three was one of them. And I believe that was for like ulcerative colitis. And I, there was just a big lawsuit because there too, um, I don't want to misquote, but they, I believe they've, they've um, found deception there um, because the scientists who came up to it had these very specific strains in it, but then it was changed to a different formula. So he ended up winning like a $4 million lawsuit. So uh, that, that's kind of interesting, like just like the probiotics world, how important the strain is. You know, the strain and the CFU need to match the clinical study. So strain, CFU, clinical study, that's a probiotic. Interesting. If it doesn't match, then if you change that formula, if you change a handful of those strains because they're cheaper to make, they're easier to keep alive, whatever it may be, then you don't have the same clinical outcome. You know, you, that, that hasn't been studied. That's something else. That's but very interesting. That. And just I, so I don't know the details of that DSL number three study. I, you know, I know that that is a good product. Uh, I don't know exactly, so I don't want to misspeak there. But I'm, that was a. I, I know there was a lawsuit that he won, and I thought that was the kind of the idea behind it. I I have also heard that um, when searching for. Uh, instead of looking at colony forming units, uh, you should be looking at the quality of the strain and it should be human, uh, human strains. Is that true? Um, I mean, it all depends because these bacillus that I was telling you, bacillus coagulans and some of these other ones, they have shown health benefits in clinical studies um, as far as I remember. So they have benefits too. But do they have benefits for skin? Or do they have benefits for ulcerative colitis? Or do they have benefits for the immune system? Or do they have benefits for gut barrier function or depression? Or, you know, what is it? What has it been studied on? So it all depends. They can be beneficial. It just depends on the clinical study, what it showed. So it doesn't have to be from uh, a human person like the LGG, I, you know, and the strains and, and our probiotic as well. 